Thank you for coming to this presentation. I'm Shen Guangshi from National Taiwan University of Science and Technology. I'm going to present my paper titled as Grammars of Interlocking SL Locks. The motivation of this research uh, started from trying to dissect a cube into interlocking parts that are identical. And so we derive SL block, which is an octa cube designed for making semi interlocking structures. And later we discovered that we can use three rewrite grammars to define languages of SL block compositions, which we call SL strings. And the objective of this uh, research is to develop a kind of mathematical basis for systematic SL block compositions based on procedural symmetry. Uh, this is one example of SL strain composition. Uh, this uh, presented structure consists of more than 8,000 interlocking SL blocks without using glue or any external support. And we use a mathematical representation based on non-commutated semi-ring to define interlocking compositions of SL blocks. And this is another example which consists of more than 14,000 interlocking SL blocks. And these blocks were first assembled into 304 interwoven frames to make this panel uh, the size of 60 times 60 centimeters using blocks uh, which are about 2.4 centimeters in length. And we use blue and white blocks and arrange these blocks into interwoven configurations and also we need to comply the whole structure with figurative patterns on both sides of the panel. On the left hand I show uh, the shape of SL block. So it consists of eight linking cubes. The left hand side is like a S shape and the right hand side is like an L. So that's the reason why we call it the SL block. If we take the initial block like this and then we follow the y-axis and then make a rotation of 180 degree then we get this blue uh, block like this and the two together we call it a conjugate pair because this conjugate pair become the fundamental interlocking structure for SL strings and in this example, the white pairs is the initial pair. And then uh, with this cyan pairs, uh, they become interlocked, kind of uh, penetrating each other to make interlocking structure. And we define this operation as H, which is, uh, can be defined as the transformation, geometric transformation from the initial pair to the concatenating pair. And we analyzed all possible concatenation. We realized there are totally four, uh, totally six of them. So they can be categorized with uh, the columns, following the columns, uh, depending on the rotations on the Z axis for the initial pair to the concatenating pair. Or we categorize in terms of rows, uh, which can be distinguished by whether it consists of a rotation on the x-axis or no rotations. Uh, this concatenation can go on endlessly for example, here with three consecutive 
concatenation uh, following each transformation, then we can join four conjugate pair of the SL blocks. So the first one is this uh, the white pair, and then the cyan pair, and then the third white pair again, and the fourth cyan pair. And with these two open ending, uh, we can the concatenation can go on endlessly for both sides. And this example shows we started with an edge concatenation. So this will uh, join the white pair, the cyan pair, and then we follow with an A concatenation. So the whole configuration will make a right turn. Okay, so if we complete the three pairs, then we get this one. And we can see that with these uh, two open ended, we can still go on endlessly. And these are three examples of SL strings. This one consists of four concatenation of edge transformation, so it consists of five pairs. And this one consists of four A configure, uh, concatenation, but because it forms a looping structure, so it uh, the, the starting pair become identical to the ending pair, so it consists of only four pairs. And this one is also a looped structure, and it consists of totally 12 pairs. And when we represent the entire strain using this string representation, we can use the exponential to represent the number of repetitive patterns. And this example uh, use all the six types of concatenation, and each type uh, is separated by one H concatenation. Using concatenation as a kind of non-commutative multiplication, and we can define another op uh, operation, and uh, which means options. So with multiplication and addition, we can define a semi-ring. Okay, and with with it, with this semi-ring, we can define rewrite expression like this. X is a variable, which is uh, not yet decided. And then with this equal sign, uh, which represents that the variable may become any alternative, which is defined in this expression. So it can start with the A concatenation, and then follow with either one of these three alternatives. And one represents the multiplicative identity, which means doing nothing. And then this one is an option for adding one edge concatenation, or we can add two edge concatenation. And then the entire string will be ended with another A. So with this expression, uh, it defines x as a variable which can be evaluated into any of these three alternatives. Okay, and also uh, using this uh, notation, we can define recursive rewrite rules. For example, this one. So x variable started with uh, h and then followed by either we can do nothing and the whole process will be terminated, or we can go on to add another x. Okay, and with this recursive definition, we will be able to define uh, this set of alternatives. G1 is an example we can call it a universal grammar because it defines all possible SL strength making use of all the six 
types of concatenation. And these are examples created uh, by a computer program by randomly choosing uh, any of these six concatenation. Uh, G2S grammars are defined elongated rectangular shape. And these are the three examples created by this grammar. So here with the, this rewrite rule, we can see that X always generates symmetrical part in its left-hand side and the right-hand side. Okay, so that will guarantee the whole strain uh, will become a loop structure and it has no more open ending for further extension. For these grammars, we find a property of a type of grammar which is very useful and very interesting. We call it fixed ending grammar. So for example, this one is a string created by this grammar and the starting, the initial pair is shown in cyan and the ending pair is shown in blue. And for all alternative created by this grammar, we find that the relation between starting pair and end pair are always the same. And we can you can transform the starting pair to the end pair using this transformation. And this type of grammar, we call it fixed ending grammar. And we can use fixed ending grammar to insert grammars to a string. Okay, so for example, this is a string defined with these strings for concatenation. And if we consider this two H shown in red, it is corresponding to this part. And we can always use the alternatives, any alternatives of a fixed ending grammar. And then we plug that uh, SL string into this existing string to make a structure like this. So uh, with this uh, way, we can create a structure like this. And we discovered that we can use this fixed ending grammar to combine grammars. G4 is a fixed ending grammar. For example, this one, this one, this one are all alternatives defined in G4. They can have different shapes, but always with fixed ending like this. And this makes it possible to join the other grammar, which is G5. And this grammar always create elongated rectangular configuration like this. And it is always possible to join them. So by joining them, we define G6. And we find that G6 is capable of defining alternatives of this kind of shapes. Okay, and G6 go on this process like this. And we can define syntax directed translation grammar using one input grammar and then convert the input structure to uh, based on two different output grammars to create configuration like this. And uh, we define grammars to create this kind of building-like structures. Or a grammar to create tree-like structures. And using a uh, syntax-directed transformation to translate a tree like this into a tree like this. And uh, so far, we have discovered some uh, useful ideas to represent SL strain using rewrite grammars. And uh, this kind of fixed ending grammars are very helpful for devising grammars that are meaningful and interesting for SL block composition. And feature works are still needed for clearer definitions, theorem proving, and the semantic checking based on syntactic operations. Thank you.